I can only reiterate, I suppose, uh, what I had said to most all of you, I suppose, on Sunday afternoon, trying to keep our days straight. Uh, you may recall that Jeffrey Dedarian had given some tearful commentary uh, regarding uh, the incident. And at that point, uh, I believe reading from a text, attributed the text of those comments to his brother Michael, who did not speak at the time. I said at the time, or following that, when, when asked, that I am hopeful that the Dedarians are as cooperative with law enforcement as they have been with the press, because neither of the brothers uh, had responded to questions for which uh, we remain hopeful that they have answers for all of us on, but specifically to see whether or not criminal charges uh, can or should be filed. Since that time, apparently last evening on, I believe it was Channel 7, uh, the, Mr. Jeffrey Dedarian gave brief comment uh, claiming that uh, he was anxious once again, just as he had in the text of his comments on, I believe, Saturday evening, claiming to have the answers come out. Additionally, he commented that he would either prompt or has started an investigation. So I say reiterate because days now have passed. Our investigation has not slowed down. Uh, and I credit the incredible men and women in uniform for that progress. But I reiterate to all of you again, we're all looking for answers. Uh, I believe that the Dedarians could offer some that would help all of us, but specifically me as the chief law enforcement officer, make a determination uh, whether or not uh, this was criminal. And it appears, yet again, the medium they use is the press rather than speaking to law enforcement. So through all of you, I suppose, I implore them to, if they would, contact uh, the local agencies and not the Boston Press Association. We in Rhode Island need answers. I know the nation does as well. But specifically, the law enforcement, men and women in uniform need answers, and I need to get to a conclusion as quickly as possible, cognizant of the pain that's scarring our community. That is something uh, that could take place and may have taken place, and I won't comment on it. I have noted, as I think all of us have, that the Dedarians, for one, and there may be others, it's not unique to them that we need to revisit, for example, Jeffrey Dedarian, who answered a couple of questions while the station was still ablaze and people were trying to survive. It's not unusual that as time passes, now in this case several days, that evidence is accumulating, both physical evidence and interviews. And sometimes you need to return to people to ask them questions. Others, you need to start if you've never interviewed them, specifically Michael Dedarian and perhaps others. What I can tell you is that this investigation continues in full. People cooperate or they don't. Not limited, perhaps, to the Dedarians, but we move ahead, trying as best we can to get at a point where we're content that based on the facts and all the evidence we have, looking at the applicable law, we can make a determination regarding justice. And I say that justice, in my estimation, based on my powers and responsibility in me, entrusted in me through the people of this state, is to make a determination whether justice is to stand here before all of you, but most particularly the people of this state who have lost loved ones and are suffering of particularly acute pain, more so than the rest of our community and the nation, to tell them that it was a criminal act that caused these unfortunate and untimely deaths, or it was not. I can say that the band members, uh, one band member tragically was lost in, in this uh, horrific incident. The other band members, as I've indicated previously, have been cooperative, and I remain confident that they'll be cooperative as this investigation continues, albeit an investigation or ultimately, if appropriate, uh, in a court of law with criminal charges attached. He has spoken with the authority. Yes. Can you restate across the capacity of the station nightclub on Thursday night? How many people do you guys leave from the nightclub? You, you say restate. I've never stated. Could you tell us what the capacity of the nightclub on Thursday night? Uh, just to clarify, you're talking about the number of people that were in there, or are you talking about under law how many people? Under law, 
that determination will be made by the fire marshal under law. In terms of the number of people that are in there, we're looking at a number of uh, different elements, I suppose, that would allow us to p perhaps, it's important to say perhaps, gauge how many people were in that nightclub. Recalling that, there were three bands that played there, and it's a fluid atmosphere with some leave and some go. One device I can say, for example, is the very uh, footage that I think news stations uh, play too much, showing the pain of the people that whose lives ultimately are lost, or those whose lives are hanging in the balance. That's a decision for you all to make, but I can tell you it is has afforded law enforcement authorities, myself as the head of it, to start to analyze at that moment how many people were in there. Whether or not that ultimately will allow us to tell you all, or more importantly, no disrespect, the people of this state, particularly those families in pain, how many people were in there, and whether or not that was a violation of our law is something we've yet to determine.